Hi, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org. We're going to talk about panic disorders. I just recorded this a second ago, but it didn't take, so I'm going to do it again. And it's past 10.30, so we need to hurry up and do this so I can get to bed. The definitions that are important here are panic disorder, which is characterized by recurrent panic attacks, and panic attacks, which are periods of intense fear or discomfort, and they include physical symptoms, and you have to have a certain amount of physical symptoms that we'll talk about here in a second. Agoraphobia is another important definition here. This is the fear of having a panic attack in situations that are hard to escape or embarrassing to get out of. So usually these are public places uh, like the grocery store or the mall or uh, fear that you're going to have it in uh, at your work. So agoraphobia is also usually associated with avoiding these situations. So the general presentation, often these people are going to show up worrying about the physical symptoms more than just the underlying panic attack. So they, they will acknowledge probably or maybe that they're anxious, but they will probably might focus on the fact that their chest hurts because they're afraid of, of having a heart attack or they uh, might have uh, a... Sh- the shortness of breath, and they think they're maybe having an asthma attack or something like that. And uh, to have, to qualify as a panic attack, you have to have four of these symptoms here. So uh, tachypnea, chest pains, palpitations, diaphoresis, nausea, trembling, fear of dying or going crazy, depersonalization, which is where you kind of feel like you're not you or you're outside of your body, or it, everything just seems like it's not real. And hot flashes also are on this list. Uh, under tachypnea, I mentioned perioral and, and or acral paresthesias because this numbness or tingling around your lips is, is very specific for panic attacks with uh, hyperventilation. So these people will... I mean, some of them will come in just saying that they think they had a panic attack because they're familiar enough with with what uh, that word means. But uh, but many of them will focus on these physical symptoms too. So under DSM four, you have to have multiple attacks to call it a panic disorder, and after at least one of these attacks, you have to have a month of behavior change. So these are behavior changes, for example, agoraphobia, or just uh, other behavior changes uh, like avoiding certain situations or just being kind of uh, concerned about having an attack enough that you uh, that it affects your day-to-day life. That persistent concern for more attacks is also part of the criteria, and you've got to make sure it's not due to drugs or a medical condition. And we'll talk about some medical conditions or drugs that could cause this type of presentation. you got to specify as well if there is agoraphobia, because that will affect the way that we, that way that we uh, do our uh, psychotherapy. So on our differential list, we've got pulmonary causes like asthma and PEs. They're going to have the shortness of breath that leads to the anxiety. So you combine a couple of those things, and uh, and you're getting pretty close to meeting the criteria for a panic attack. Like a PE, you got chest pain, you got uh, shortness of breath. Sometimes you can get palpitations with it as well. So. So you can see how these can look a lot like a panic disorder or a panic attack. Most people are afraid they're going to have an MI when they have chest pain, especially if they're uh, overweight guys in their 50s. They are worried about it, and you got to rule it out too. Uh, angina and arrhythmias also can look like this. The hyperparathyroidism, pheochromocytoma, and hyperparathyroidism All of these can be associated with kind of this anxious feeling, and some of them can give you the shortness of breath and things like that that look like panic disorder too. TIAs and seizures uh, and other neurological intracranial processes can look like this. And with psychiatric, remember we did a video on generalized anxiety disorder, 
And the difference there is that you're anxious pretty much uh, constantly. It's not just uh, these discrete events. And you're anxious about everyday activities. And and you don't meet these uh, physical symptoms necessary for panic attack, although some of them can be involved. PTSD is different, mainly just because you have that traumatic event and you're reliving it. Substances like PC, PCP and cocaine can give you uh, anxiety symptoms and withdrawal from benzos, alcohol, and heroin all can look a lot like this too. So treatment, CBT is the main one. A lot of therapists uh, use CBT and kind of intermingle it in with other types of therapy, but uh, it can be pretty effective for this. SSRIs and TCAs, just like you would treat a panic, uh, sorry, a generalized anxiety disorder. And then you got your benzodiazepines for the short-term kind of rescue uh, rescue medication for panic attacks. And uh, again, like we talked about before, you, you want to try and uh, avoid using these too often for long-term treatment just because they do have that high risk of, of uh, dependence. So please leave comments for us. That way we can make these bit better, especially when things go out of date. Or if I just make a mistake, uh, please please find those mistakes and, and put them in the notes so other people can see them and so I can see them and make the videos better next time. And then if you really want to get involved, lots of stuff we can we can have you do. If you want to go to worldmedicalschool.org backslash volunteer, we need designers, we need editors, people to help teach. So uh, if you want to get involved in a good cause, please, please come and, and volunteer and uh, we'll help you to build resumes as well. So thanks for your time and have a good night.